<laughs> oh, a watermelon. <laughs> it went through the watermelon. Hickok 45, look what I have. Broom handled Mauser. Can you believe it? The C96. It only took about 5,000 requests in 10 years for us to go ahead and get one. We wanted to get right on that. Didn't want to put it off. <laughs> Is that a, a pretty firearm or what, huh? Let's put the slide down. First, got to work the hammer. Oh, I forgot. Got to touch and put down the ah, magazine follower. There we go. That's what it looks like when you're about to fire it, except it's empty right now. C96, first time I'd ever fired one was this week. And I uh, thought I'd bring you along and uh, tell you a little bit about it in case you don't know everything about it. I certainly don't, but we're gonna show. And guess what? This one is a vet bring back, brought back from World War II by a veteran. Cool, and, he, and what is even cooler is he's still alive. And he is probably watching this, okay? His son lent this to us, so this is really cool. So we're gonna enjoy shooting this some, talking about it, and letting you join us here at the range. Let's go up here and take a look at this thing. It's uh, what you could call an antique, okay? Uh, is it an antique if it's 100 years old? This is considered to be, to have been made, manufactured, but somewhere between 1911 and 1915, this particular firearm. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, don't you know the serial number? Yeah, but uh, a lot of the records were destroyed after World War II when uh, the Oberndorf uh, factory was destroyed. All the records and all that was destroyed. So a lot of, a lot of this is kind of hit and miss on these. They know the ballpark on a lot of them. And I looked it up, and as best I can see from my research is, you know, that's the, t the time frame. Plus, all the, uh, the pieces of it are are indicative that it was a wartime commercial model okay they classify them by like pre-war commercial wartime commercial and some other classifications and all that and you can tell by the hammer whether the hole is small or large whether it has the little thingy there on the hammer you got a uh, the safety the type of safety and and the characteristics of it and serial number too so uh, from all that, my research tells me that's when it was made, between 1911 and 1915, and it's a wartime commercial model, all right? And most of these were, believe it or not, uh, you may have, you've seen these, of course, you may have the impression that, wow, this, this, this firearm, this old military firearm was used in, uh, you know, by so many armies, but it really was not. It was used by a lot of uh, armies, but not as a primary adoption. So Mauser sold them here and there, around the globe, uh, various contracts and different things. But uh, the biggest market was commercial, actually. And a lot of them were sold in Britain. Britain British officers loved them. A lot of them went there early. And uh, so you're liable to see them in any historical movie, even if it's historically accurate. Uh, you're just liable to see them anywhere. Uh, in fact, I believe Han Solo had one of these, didn't he? Uh, doesn't he, when you watch Star Wars? So basically that's what it is. Uh, and then they dressed it up a little bit. So it's, it's a, an iconic piece of hardware, no doubt about it. Just like the Colt single action army, the, the AK, uh, the AR-15, I guess. Uh, what else could you say? Even the Glock, I guess, you know, 1911, you know, firearms that all you have to do is see the profile of it and you know what it is. You know, C-96, no question about that. Now, you, you see different variants of it. Uh, there were a lot of variants they made, especially early on, as I understand. You know, 20-round mags, 10-round mags. This is eight, uh, six-round mags, uh, different length barrels, uh, just different, all kinds of configurations of the thing. This, as I read, was kind of what it settled into, though, about this time period, was this was the one that Mauser, you know, was making, pretty much. And then, you know, they were actually used in the military, you know, uh, as well, you know, German military. You've seen them in movies. You've seen them everywhere. Uh, they are a bit quirky. They're a bit quirky. So we may have some trouble with it. It's been pretty reliable. I've been shooting at some. Let me show you this before we get too far afield. Again, uh, Federal doesn't load anything for this. It's the, uh, let's see, 7.63 by 25 millimeter. Interesting little round. Pretty hot little round. 
And so uh, we appreciate all that federal does for us, but today they couldn't join the party. Uh, that's okay, they're almost always you know, at the party. But uh, so we've got some PPU here we're using and uh, you know, so far it's done okay. Look at this holster though. I was gonna wear it, you know, but this leather is so old and, uh, and I, it's one of the straps here, you know, it's just, it's not really, you know, tied, it's kind of loose. I, I don't want to damage, this stuff is ancient. That uh, even has a date on it, 1916, okay? Berlin. Berlin, uh, it's either an N or M39, I think it says there. So, pretty cool, has a little cleaning rod there. That is, that is nifty. So you put that on your belt, and what is that, you ask? Now, a lot of you already know, right? Uh, it's pretty funny, this is part of the reason the Chinese called this the box cannon, you know. Uh, it's com more commonly known as a broom handle because the handle, I guess, looks a little bit like a broom handle. It doesn't to me, really, but that's that's what they call it. So we know it's clear. I shot all eight rounds. It's a little quirky here with the hammer. I'll show you. Getting the slide down and everything can be a little tricky. So let's see. Slide. Hammer has to be down, I believe. So you put it back in the box. Oh, excuse me. Holster. <laughs> this is a Fred Flintstone holster. How's <laughs> <laughs> Except his would be made out of rock, wouldn't it? There you go. How's that? There's your gun. So then you put it in a holster. And there you go. That's it. I won't strap it in this here, but that's it. And put it on your belt. And you're ready. A big eight-round magazine, at least on this one. Okay. <laughs> so that's interesting. Now, you might ask, why is there a wooden holster? Most of you probably already know. Uh, there's a wooden holster because if you're shooting long range, you're out like a thousand meters. I think it's got that on the 800, 1000 on the site there. Of course, that would be uh, useful, wouldn't it? Well, maybe you need to, well, you could, well, you couldn't keep cigars in there too well if you're gonna have the fire them in there. But you might wanna put a stock on here and Turn it into an SBR. Look at that. Pow, pow. How's that for cool? So now you have a carbine, you could say. Okay? Or you could say you have a carbine, right? Depending on how you say that. But that's what that was about. Now that's pretty cool. That's like a little AR-7, isn't it? The uh, survival rifle we did. Just a hundred years earlier version of it. All right, so we'll, we'll shoot it both ways here a little bit. We don't want to overshoot it, whatever that means. We don't want to shoot it too much. I mean, it's really old and it's really special. Um, the cool thing about this, if I can remember, uh, a viewer here locally in Nashville contacted me. It's been months and months ago, before Christmas, I think, and said he had one of these we could use and borrow sometimes. He said, yeah, we'd like to do that sometime. We just couldn't get around to it. I saved his information. I finally got back to him two or three times. We exchanged messages. And uh, and then finally we just set a date. So like we're never going to get to it if we don't just set a date. So we did. I said, look, on this weekend we'll hook up and and we'll do that. All that. But I told him right away. He said his father brought it back from you know, World War II. I said, yeah, are you sure you want to lend that to us? Because you know anything could happen. You know, house fire. You know, theft wouldn't be easy. Uh, lots of security and safes and cameras and all that. But still. If, if there was ever some catastrophe, I always throw it, you know when it's gonna happen. It's when I've got somebody's borrowed special firearm, so I'm always paranoid about that. I never have liked to borrow machinery from people. Uh, Cause you know, sure enough, if it's ever gonna break, it's gonna break the day I'm using it. So I've always been reluctant on that lawnmower, whatever it was. But anyway, he really wanted us to do it. And uh, he, he was really adamant about it. And you know, for the, just to, to put it in a video that a lot of people are gonna see his father, you know, brought this back from World War II. And as I said, he's still alive. And I said, you, you mind if we mention his name? Does that matter? I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's any reason why we wouldn't. Uh, I thought, why not? And he said, yeah, sure, go ahead. And uh, so his name is uh, James G. Dean. James Dean. <laughs> James G. Dean. He's not the movie star. And, uh, and he was stationed, uh, well, gosh, I think he said he was uh, North Africa first. I'm not sure where all he was. But he was... Uh, He's 95 years old right now, and he's in pretty good health. He's in a wheelchair, but he's in pretty good health. His mind is clear and everything. And, and if you're watching uh, James, 
but we appreciate you allowing us to borrow this and I think you probably will be watching this maybe not today but tomorrow or some other time right uh, because once something's on YouTube you can watch it anytime right pretty amazing uh, and if it gets boring James uh, Mr. Dean I should be probably saying <laughs> just click out because that's what a lot of people do I get the rambling not shooting enough and they click away and go look at some cartoons or something you can do the same thing but anyway we appreciate you going over there and helping to preserve freedom we really do and uh, the people like you my dad was over there and you know so many uh, men and women a few women too so we appreciate it. I want to thank you for that and then thank you for allowing us to shoot this and thanks for bringing it back your son says you brought back your uh, 1911. You were able to do that, I think, and even a, a PO8. So that's really cool. Anyway, Mr. Dean, uh, you can write a comment if I get this wrong, but he was involved in forward observation missions and running sorties, flying, uh, I guess smaller airplanes. And their job was to to just scout kind of and see where the enemy is. and and you know, help align the uh, artillery targets. So they would be behind the lines in a field somewhere, I guess around where our artillery is, and, and they would fly out at almost treetop level, three, 500 feet, whatever, and uh, it's to try to remain uh, anonymous as much as possible and not get shot down uh, by, by one of these, you know, a rifle even. And uh, they would uh, kind of give the coordinates of where the enemy is. And he flew, I think, a sunset, 156 of those missions. He lost uh, one crewman. And he lost one airplane in those missions and got some medals and, and everything. So, you know, great fellow, apparently. And uh, we appreciate, uh, you know, all that that, that that he did, that you did, Mr. Dean. So anyway, uh, we're, we're especially uh, happy to have this firearm. And I'm going to load while I'm talking here because I... I can uh, I can talk all day, you know that. So this is really neat. Uh, it it came by, you know, it doesn't have a lot of import markings or anything. And uh, as as his son said, he he was in a I see he was a battalion adjunct, I guess near the end of the war, and and whatever all that encompasses. And so maybe in the transition and coming back and forth or whatever. So he was required, I think uh, he said almost to keep his 1911 he carried and keep it with him and bring it back and have it and he was also able to bring some other firearms back and other memorabilia so so like i said he has these things back and not everybody could get that done i know my dad wanted to bring his 1911 home uh, but uh, depending on what you were doing and everything i guess it uh, depended on that so that's cool let me load it now the firearm is uh, as i said it's quirky and one of the reasons there's not a lot of replicas of it being made and and and, and companies today are not building this gun instead of Glocks and 1911s and M&Ps is it uh, the feeding system is complicated and it's difficult to be really safe with it so I have to be very careful and I'm gonna cock it back let me show you what I'm talking about you gotta to get the well you can punch it and it does okay and then and then it catches on the magazine follower of course but to get the safety to engage like, let's say it were loaded right now. Here's the safety. I, I can't engage the safety unless I pull the hammer back a little bit more. Then it will work. <laughs> you know, so it's just kind of an awkward uh, animal to work with. You just can't put, you can't just put the safety on. Now you can get it on. Once you get it on and say I have a round in the chamber, the f trigger won't pull. And then I can pop the safety off and fire it. So for the first seven, eight rounds or however many it holds, uh, you know, this one holds eight then yeah not bad but then in terms of reloading it and just uh operating it quickly uh the ergonomics of it it's just not quite a 1911 you know <laughs> let's just put it that way all right let's load it so i pull this all the way back it catches on the hammer and i'm just and i can't put the safety on how is that i'm going to reload this firearm and i cannot have the safety on okay so the safety as usual the most important safety is your brain uh now i'm gonna try your stripper clip these uh sometimes they work pretty well looks at time it's kind of a there we go got to use your muscles to get it in there okay so he gave me those three stripper clips with it all right now you just have to kind of push it forward and there it goes it's hot so let's see we've had a few malfunctions it's mainly been on the last round let's shoot on the target over here put a couple it it shoots a little bit to the right has been my uh, determination. I'm gonna hold right in that red and see if it 
seems to do that. I've not shot it on paper yet. right in the middle yeah maybe it does maybe it doesn't let's try a stop sign now it's holding right in the middle okay it's not too much to the right that's for sure oh. got a light trigger i didn't mean to fire it that quickly there we go malfunction on the last round we've been getting a little bit of that but uh let me see if i can squeeze him back down in there get him back in while the enemy's advancing. There we go, now it's empty. So just on the last round, we've had a few issues. Could be the spring's getting weak. I don't know why, it's only 100 years old. You know? So that's what you get, right? Uh, so again, broom handle, that's why it's called that. It's uh, featured in a lot of movies. You know, Han Solo's, uh, what a heavy blaster or whatever they called it was that and of course the real reason i wanted to use it because i spent a lot of time playing resident evil 4 and it's just just a cool gun you know i play that game probably 10 hours a day you know oh gosh where else westerns joe kid uh big jake uh you know it's just it, it's just an interesting firearm but think about it, if you're gonna yeah, and they do that a lot obviously in movies right they like to have a cool firearm it doesn't matter if it's the most appropriate for the time sometimes but this of course uh, goes off the scale in terms of looks you know cool factor you know it's just a really cool firearm it's so different it's so different you got a fixed magazine here and it, and i haven't gotten into the specifics of it but it's a fixed magazine and uh they were made in different variants that hold different amounts of ammo and uh, what else about it? It's it's like a little rifle, like John was saying. You know, you got your bolt. You don't really have a slide that moves on you. Your bolt uh, works. You've got a rifle sight. It looks like kind of funny. And it's it's not the best firearm to field strip. I'll probably do it here for you, just because I know you like to see me fumble around. We probably ought to go ahead and do it. Let's shoot, let's shoot a few more first, though. Okay, just in case, in case I don't get it back together. Uh, okay, I got to pull that all the way back. Get it hooked on the hammer. Again, this is uh, seven six three by uh, by twenty five millimeter. This ammo is. Right. It's a it's considered a hot little round, uh, and until whoops nineteen thirty five. Okay, I see that. I don't want to lose that. Until nineteen thirty five, it was uh, it was kind of the hottest pistol round uh, until you know the three fifty seven Magnum came out. So. I'll push this forward see how she does i'll put the safety on oh, forgot I gotta pull that back put the safety on now it won't fire i'll take the safety off as i'm doing that i'll find some ears to stick in my ears oh let's smoke a little pot here yeah i bet mauser didn't realize this was going to be so good for that <laughs> or shooting two liters oh, man. or cowboys You know what? I know what you're thinking. Is he ever going to shoot the gong? Well, let's try. I don't think I hit it. We'll have to try again. Huh. I thought it was pretty good uh, let off. Let me see. There it is. I'll get this while I'm thinking about it. You know, I probably should break it down for you before I forget, right? So, this is, a, like I said, it's a little bit of a complex mechanism. And that's the reason it's not used today or, you know, reproduced. Uh, it's not the most popular carry gun out there or anything like that. And uh, we've got, of course, the, uh, the old Jeep. Oh, 98 bugs bother me here for some reason. Out here, we thought that might be appropriate. Used about the same time, right? Got my screwdrivers. Got a 1911 out here. I would rather have the 1911, I'll tell you what, if I was uh, in battle back in 1915, this time period. So, we'll see how this goes. Just to show you how, how it looks and, and works. And I, I don't want to shoot it too much, like I said. Um, although the owner, uh, Mr. Dane's son, said he gets it out every now and then and shoots it. He went for a period of about 20 years where he said he just stayed locked up, never touched it, and that kind of thing. But... Uh, but he says he shoots at some but you know something this old you never know when something's gonna finally break okay first thing you do you, you obviously make sure it's not loaded 
And then uh, you take the plate off the floor plate off the magazine here. And I notice it's getting some age on it. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, see, it's a little like a little bitty. It wouldn't take a whole lot of, of hard use for that to, to, to break right there. Pull out the spring and the follower. Okay. And then you go back here and you push up on this. And am I forgetting something? No, I don't think so. Oh. Oh, touching the trigger here. Wonder why that was doing that. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I was trying to go the wrong way with it. I almost forgot. Okay, and then that just slides off. So that's pretty easy cleaning there, isn't it? Okay. Now here's where you gotta watch it. I'm gonna try not to lose any parts from the mechanisms here, trigger mechanism, everything, the sear, hammer. And you grab this and you just pop that off. Okay. Had a little trouble, got the sear out of the slot there earlier. Then they gotta ever get it back, the hammer would cock. Then the locking bolt comes out like that. All right. Then you find a <coughs> screwdriver. I guess this will do it. And you take the firing pin out back here. You push in on that, go a quarter turn. That comes out. Then you gotta get the uh, bolt lock out of there, bolt block. Okay. So to do that, you just push on it and then jiggle it a little bit. Hold your mouth right and it might come out. It's got a spring right there, you go. And then you pull out the bolt. There you go. You got pretty good access to the, you know, the barrel and everything from the rear. You can clean her up there. So that's pretty neat. Uh, and then you've got your, your spring in there. You can take out or not and you can clean inside that. Doesn't matter. Uh, and that comes out. So all that is pretty accessible uh, that, to that extent. And uh, there you have it. You know, that's as far down as I'm going with it. I'm not going to take the sear out and any of that. I just hope I haven't uh, got myself in Dutch again. So let's put this back in. And there's your extractor. You generally don't have to take it down much further. Like you don't want to take the extractor off probably and that sort of thing. Slide the bolt back in. And in order to get the uh, bolt lock back in there, you have to put a screwdriver, a flat nose screwdriver or something on this. You got a bigger screwdriver. There we go. It'll go down far enough. And then work in the block there. I'm going to use too big a screwdriver. I think I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it's fine. Okay, and then you put your firing pin in, it just goes in one way there. You got a little, yeah. And then you do just the opposite. Quarter turn to the counterclockwise. Okay, and all that should work. All right, then you put the locking block, I think that is, back on. I just wanted to learn all this because I never know. I might want to build one of these for myself. Uh, I mean, my skills know no bounds, you know, I have boundaries. I might just make one of these. If I kind of remember just from taking this one apart a few times how to do it. Okay, kind of right there. That sort of snaps ah, into place. And don't you get off on me there now. About to, okay, and if you're really lucky. This will slide right back on. Everything will go back together. Kind of like the way it was. Yeah, this is the only place I get hung up a little bit. Oops. Uh, let's see. Push up on that a little bit so it helps. And I discovered that a little pressure from a piece of wood helps immensely. Right there. It's, it's not likely to do any damage. Just wood. There we go. Wood on metal. Okay. I believe that's got it. Except for the uh, magazine. Make sure it's okay. 
so it seems okay. Yeah. So that's kind of how they look inside. Let's put the uh, magazine follower and spring back in. Yeah, John, I think we can build one of these uh, maybe next weekend. All right. I'm going to get this one back to the owner really soon. I don't like to have heirlooms like this too long at all. Very reluctant borrow on something like this. This uh, Mr. Dean's son must just not really know me very well to trust me with something like this, right? No, he's a really good guy, and uh, I would guess his father really is as well, in addition to, uh, to having served so valiantly in World War II. Pretty cool. We're, we're honored to, to fire this thing. This is so, so special. So we'll shoot a couple more times, and uh, let's, let's load it again. Okay, so pull the bolt back. We'll see if the gnome skull got it back together correctly here. Okay. Did I say I would not want to have one of these, have to carry one of these into combat? <laughs> you know, I really would not. They're, they're rather awkward. Oh, you know what? I'm going to hit the gong. That just uh, bothers me. I don't know whether I was going high or something. I'll try. Hold on the bottom of it. I think I heard that one. There we go. Yeah. I see it moving. It's a hot little round. Without a bow. Let's try the red plate. What the heck? I do believe it hit it. Let's try, uh, I'm gonna try that uh, turkey up there. <laughs> All right, it's worthy of turkey killing. Oh, look at here, we've got two liters and stuff. <laughs> and we had a malfunction on the last round. Again, okay. I'll, uh, I don't know if I'm limp, well, I don't think I'm limp resting. I had two hands on it. I'm going to hold right in the middle of that stop sign again. Yeah. I think it goes just a hair to the right. It's not much. It's not much. So, boy, that thing. Oh, you know what? I haven't shot. Have I shot it with this? No. Let's, let's uh, shoot it with this one time. How's that? I'll just put these in by hand here. It's cool. This is kind of a collector's gun, of course. It's not something you're going to buy to shoot. Uh, it, you know, it just isn't. I don't think <laughs> that you, if you want to shoot it a lot, because they are fairly valuable. And again, they're kind of fragile in a way. So you'd probably want to just shoot it occasionally. You know, it's just a collector's, you know, firearm more or less. So we'll shoot it maybe one more time here. I'm gonna load, oh, ouch. Let me pull that back. I don't like that, okay. I think I didn't have the bolt back all the way caught by the hammer there, like you see. Okay. And interestingly enough, I don't know if I mentioned this, that uh, Paul Mauser did not really design this. Some people that worked for him did. Uh, what was it? Uh, Fidel and his brothers or cohorts or somebody. And they kind of kept it a secret. And... and Mauser didn't really like it that much at all, but uh, he saw the financial <laughs> potential in it and, uh, and he agreed to produce it. And uh, I think he, what he called it, Mauser's military pistol, I think at first, uh, hoping he'd get some big military contracts with it. And uh, that didn't quite happen, although he sold some of them to the military. Some of y'all may know more about that, but there's so much, I mean, uh, about this, firearm that uh, is out there all the variants uh, wars around the world where it was used various engagements movies oh, okay all right what was I gonna shoot I forgot now well let's just uh, we got the target let's uh, let's go back over there and shoot a couple things Oh, I know what I was going to do. Get that safety on. Get that safety on. You got to watch me. I get to talking and I forget. 
Now that safety is engaged really, really well. I've got to push forward. So I'll keep it down range, but uh, I'll put the stock on. That's what I was going to do. There we go. Short-term memory loss. All right. What's that hole in the top of it for? I don't know. Okay. There we go. Let's see if I can shoot it any better. I'll go for the gong again. Got him. Oh, you got to keep your thumb out. You got to watch your knuckle there. It, it, that hammer comes back and hits you. <laughs> Forgot about that, but I was reminded quickly. Well, let's see. I've hit the gong. I'm going to try a ram. Oh, I hit him. Try the other one. Okay, I'm not sure where it's going. I'm going to move over here closer. I don't want to finish on a miss. How about a cowboy who has never been shot? Yeah. <laughs> and that's empty. How's that for a rig? That is, a, that is an interesting looking uh, firearm. No doubt about it. Let's close that bolt again. Ah, it's so awkward. You need three hands to manipulate the thing. Got to get it off the hammer. It's not easy and get it off the ah, follower there we go so just take a look at that I mean is that beautiful or what <laughs> yeah I mean it kind of is in a historical sense that uh, is an interesting firearm I've seen these my whole life pictures at least and had never fired one now I'm an expert right <laughs> yeah yeah really uh, did you figure out what that hole was for? Better back up the video, rewind, you'll, you'll figure it out. That, that's pretty neat. That really is. Okay, anything else that I know that I didn't tell you about? Oh yeah, these things were made all around the world. Uh, it wasn't just Mauser, of course. And uh, China and Spain made a ton of them, as I understand. Maybe, you know, Mauser made around a million, they think, of them. And uh, they also think that possibly China and Spain made that many that were unlicensed. Can you imagine somebody stealing a patent and, and just copying something like that? But that's, that's what they did. And I think China, I read, were the only uh, country really that actually adopted it as a, their sidearm. You know, so I don't know, you may know more about that. But there were lots of them made. That's why you see a lot of them. A lot of them are not in great shape. This one appears to maybe have the original finish on it. It, it, it actually is in good condition, uh, just everything about it. So, but that's only part of the value in this one, of course, right? I mean, can you imagine? Uh, I've told him that you know that he is so lucky not only to have his father still living, his father's 95, but uh, to have these firearms he brought back. That is just really neat from World War II. That is just extremely special, isn't it? So uh, the old Mauser C96, it's a little bit quirky. You might have been able to tell when I took it apart there uh, how the action is and you know just the operation of it. And of course I make, my awkwardness makes something look even more awkward and quirky, right? But it, it really is kind of a quirky thing. You, I would not want to have to go to battle with it today. Again though, Go back to when this was designed, 1895, 96, 1896. Now for some of you, 1996 is a long time ago. You might not even have been born in 1996. But let's go back to 1896 and a semi-automatic pistol. Wow, this would have been, what would have been like today? I don't know, we, we almost can't uh, comprehend what it would be like today. Think about the most advanced firearm you can think of that's on the market today or that's out there, small arm. Uh, you know, a semi-automatic that holds you know, eight, or some of them even held 20, the early ones. There were a few fully auto ones. They didn't work out so well, as I understand. Uh, so for the times, you know, I mean, you think about it in 1896, seven, eight, a lot of people still packing a Colt single action army and thinking that was probably the best they could carry. And actually, I think I'd have rather carried it than, than this maybe. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so 1896. Do I need to tell you that was a long time ago? Anyway, the C96, I'll quit rambling. Uh, what else was I going to tell you about it? It's just, uh, again, if I'm going to battle tomorrow, it's going to be with this, not this. But uh, 
but it, it's it's a very interesting and it's uh, it's fun to, to learn about it and especially one that's uh, this, this special so hope you uh, can appreciate how cool that is uh, that the owner really is, is still living um, anyway I'm just glad you came by I appreciate y'all supporting the people that support us the NRA uh, budsgunshop.com and uh, federal cartridge you know premium uh, we really appreciate it and uh, life is good well I hope you guys enjoyed that because I know I sure did well I've got you here I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI the Sonoran Desert Institute they are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology and they also do a lot of work with veterans they accept the GI Bill they also have hands-on experience even though it's a distance learning program uh, so just want to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter, it's Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son. On YouTube, I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest, so you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.